This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmoth. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmoth. Between the beaches, nice weather, culture, or maybe even Mickey Mouse, Central Florida is a great place to live and word continues to spread. More and more folks are moving here and it's having a big impact on the housing market. This morning I'll be talking with Lou Nimkoff, president of the Orlando Realtor Association, to break it all down. So first off, let's get right to it. Um, what would you say the current state of Central Florida's housing market is? We're in a transition time right now where mm -hmm. we've got a relatively low inventory and fortunately we have low interest rates. Mm. So I say it's a good time to buy and a good time to sell because if you're looking to sell, uh, you're going to get multiple offers, most likely if you price it right. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking to buy, you can still get pretty reasonable interest rates that you can lock in for 30 years. That low inventory, though, is having an effect on prices. The median price is kind of up and it has continued to grow as well, right? It has. We, uh, our median price now is about 235000 Okay. Single family homes are about 255000 uh, but to get to those lower price points under the median, you have to go out kind of far. Mm -hmm. And um, fortunately, with the expansion of uh, Sunrail to the south, that's opened up a bunch of areas there. When they open up the next phase to the north, that'll help. Mm -hmm. uh, and the completion of the Beltway, specifically the Wakaiva Parkway, I think will really help. What are the hot zips? Where, where do people want to move, and hmm. what are the best place? Where are the best places to move? I know those are two different things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People, people want to live, uh, you know, in the higher priced areas, mm -hmm. hoping to get the deals. Uh, unfortunately, those deals go relatively quick. Um, you know, we have about 7,500 homes available. That includes single family, condos, mm -hmm. townhomes, everything. And so uh, when, when there's a, a supply that short, that's a little bit over a two month supply. And so when you have that small of a supply, you're gonna have properties in there that will be difficult to sell. And the reason for that is that there's always people you know, that will be willing to list their $300,000 house for 400000 mm -hmm. The problem is, unless you're an all-cash buyer, you're not going to be able to get a loan for that $400,000 purchase price because it's only a $300,000 house. Mm. So when you talk about the areas where people are looking, if they want to get at or under the median household price, they're going to need to go to some of these outlying areas or perhaps compromise on what they're looking for immediately. Like a Deltona, that, that seems to be a, a place where a lot of homes are for sale and, and around a, a, the general median price as well. Yeah, yeah, Deltona, mm -hmm. DeBerry, uh, which again is just a beneficiary of Sunrail expanding, mm -hmm. of, of that uh, Sunrail coming to the north in the first phase, then when it opens up uh, to the north, that'll open up then. And um, there's a lot of opportunities down in the south. Fortunately, um, Point Siena, mm. Hunter's Creek, Kissimmee, those are all great areas where you can get a lot of house for under the median home price. Let's talk about where we've come since 2008, the recession, yeah. and talk about the factors that go into that and, and ultimately, how much better off are we are right now as far as housing market is concerned since that time, 10 years ago? Yeah, so it's important to keep in mind that 10 years ago when housing prices peaked, it was an artificial peak. Hmm. They were driven up by people being able to buy two, three, four investment homes with no money down, and that's a lot of what caused the crash. Hmm. So while we're not quite at that peak, uh, I, I don't think that that was a realistic peak, and I think that if we think of backing up to maybe 2005, 2006, uh, we're at about that point, and, and that's where we should be. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had a, a, a crazy run. You know, there, everybody has a story who was here at that mm -hmm. time about, uh, you know, 10 offers and they had an open house and people were lining up at six in the morning. Right. That's just not realistic. Right. I mean, you know, uh, real estate is uh, unique. It takes time to examine the property. You can't just go in or buy a property sight unseen and, um, you know, think you're going to be getting a, a 
a fair market price. It doesn't work like that. It's interesting. I have a friend who moved into a new home in November, then had it appraised again a few months ago, and it was way overvalued from the time he bought it, and then he in turn sold it. Are we seeing a lot of that happening? So there are definitely opportunities out there if you're uh, pre-qualified and you can make a, a strong offer. If you're not looking to sell a house mm -hmm. that you need to sell before you can buy another house, and if you have a seller that's anxious to sell, um, you know, you can get a good deal. And particularly if you're willing to do some work in it. Mm -hmm. um, we, ha we still have a number of, um, I'll call them flippers, um, but you know, re people who come in and they'll do renovations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're cosmetic. Sometimes they're a little bit more, uh, and they'll turn around and sell it within you know three to six months. Uh, you know, with a pretty substantial increase in price. Can we talk about the role that millennials are playing right now? Uh, it seems more and more millennials, and they've continued to do this rent these single family homes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that trend will continue? And if it does continue, what could that do in five, ten years? Well, so the millennials are tending to uh, wait a little bit longer to get married. Mm -hmm. um, they are tending to, even after they get married, wait a little bit longer to buy their first home. Uh, and then they're waiting a little bit longer to start families. All three of those factors uh, typically are motivators to buy their first home. So to the extent that they're renting now, um, and those three factors are delaying what typically would be either a purchase of a starter home or move up home, mm -hmm. um, you know, does affect the dynamics of it. And that's not always bad. Um, you know, we don't want people buying a home just to think that they're going to make, you know, 10, 20 percent. We've had some really high increases in our mm -hmm. median price over the past couple of years. People can't go in and think that they're going to make, you know, 10, 20 percent every year. It doesn't work like that. Mm. If that were to happen on an ongoing basis, homes would be unaffordable. Nobody right. could continue to buy homes because they, wages don't keep up with housing prices mm -hmm. like that. What about for apartments? It seems prices for apartments continue to skyrocket. It, it, it's become yeah. uh, an issue of affordable housing, as you've seen yeah. from many of these candidates. They've been talking about the affordable housing issue. What can you tell you about that? So that really is an issue. Mm -hmm. um, the Orlando economy is driven in large part by people working in the service sector, mm -hmm. which uh, has a ripple effect in the economy, and it's really important that we be able to uh, have good, decent, affordable housing for people uh, in that area, particularly in the southwest part of town, where most of the attractions are and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it really is an issue. Um, we have about 50,000 people moving to the uh, region every year. Mm. We're building home, we're building housing for about 25,000. That includes single family, townhome, condos, apartments, everything. So we have a huge gap there, and when you have that much more demand than you have supply, home housing prices are going to go up, but I'm talking about uh, for purchase and for rent. Mm. And um, we're seeing a lot more apartments come online, which uh, helps. Uh, but eventually people want to still own a home eventually, and we've, we've got to do more things. Government has got to do more. Um, we've got to be creative in finding solutions, particularly for our, our workforce housing, mm -hmm. you know, police, fire, teachers. Right. It, it's important that these people be engaged in the communities uh, where they're working. So what about tips for selling your home in today's housing market? Lou is back after the break with what you need to know and more. Keep it here. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warman. Welcome back. This morning we're talking about the state of Central Florida's housing market. Is it a good time to buy or maybe a good time to sell? And what about those hot zip codes? The president of the Orlando Realtor Association, Lou Nimkoff, is back with those answers. When it comes to 
a good time to buy and a bad time to buy. Of course, summer just passed. Everyone's getting settled in. School is back in session. Will that have any sort of impact? Well, listings historically uh, start to ramp up in March and April mm -hmm. and go through June or July. There's a pretty substantial drop off in September, October, mm -hmm. and through the end of the year, picks up a little bit again in January, February. So your uh, options are going to be limited as we go into the fall. Does that mean there won't be homes available? No, there'll mm -hmm. definitely be homes, but there will be fewer than there are right now. For first time home buyers, and they see this interview and they say, wow, you know, I don't want to pay over the house's value, I'm gonna hold off. Mm -hmm. What sort of advice would you give them if, if they were to, if they were in a position to buy a new home, would you recommend doing it now or would you recommend waiting a year or two? I think interest rates are going to continue to rise, mm. unfortunately, and the ability to lock in a 30-year interest rate will far offset the impact of paying a little bit more in another couple of years. Mm. And the, I don't believe that housing prices are going to make any serious correction in the next couple of years, in part because of the numbers that we were just talking mm -hmm. about this huge influx of 50,000 people a year, and that's not even talking about the evacuees. Right. Think about the Puerto Rican evacuees who have come here, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of thousands of people, and we don't know whether or not that has been a temporary change, or do they, like so many of us who live here, are going to fall in love with the area and say, I want to stay. Right. And how do we provide housing for them? Hmm. So I, I don't see this, uh, I, I don't see these increases, I don't see the median price coming down in the near future. I do think that the increase, the annual percentage increase will taper off and that's probably a good thing. What about people selling homes? If, they're, if they feel like they want to sell their home, what kind of advice would you give them as they go about that process? It's important for people who really want to sell their home hmm. to first and foremost price it right. Nobody wants to have a bunch of people coming through their home and s looking at all their things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, anytime you have somebody come into your home, you're, you're, you're kind of exposing yourself. So if you really want to sell your home, price it right. Mm -hmm. Do the cosmetic things that make it more attractive. Uh, fix up the flower beds, make sure the, the, if the house needs to be painted, paint the house. Um, don't do the big renovation projects. You don't necessarily need to redo the kitchen, but if you've got a 1970s kitchen, uh, some buyers might find that unattractive, and depending on the price point, it might make sense to do a, a kitchen renovation. And some people don't want to do that themselves. Yeah, that's They want to true. move into a house and have that house ready to go when they move in. Absolutely. And, and for those, and there will be people who won't consider a house that hasn't had some renovations mm -hmm. to the kitchen, some renovations to the bathroom in the past, you know, 20 years. Is it fair to say, though, you know, as we, I've been reading stories about the housing market in Florida and Central Florida in particular, and some say it's a bad, bad time. Is it fair to say it's a bad, bad time? It's never a bad time to buy the right home if you are ready to live there for the next seven to ten years. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the process is that a uh, bank is not going to lend to you uh, unless you have, uh, unless there's an appraisal, they feel comfortable that the house is worth what you're paying for mm -hmm. it, that they feel comfortable that they're loaning you an appropriate amount based on what it's worth, and to be able to lock in interest rates, which are still now under 5%, for 30 years mm -hmm. is, is an amazing thing because we're, we're one of the few countries in the world where you can buy, where you can buy a home with a 30-year self-liquidating loan. Mm. Where in 30 years, you don't owe anything. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have a fixed cost of such an important element of mm -hmm. what your pay goes to each month mm -hmm. and your pay will inevitably go up in time at, at some rate. Mm -hmm. And when your housing costs are staying level for 30 years, 
that frees up a lot of money down the road to, to save for other things, retirement, kids' education, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And we've seen that people just continue to want to move to Florida, as we've been talking about. Uh, in contrast, let's talk about other parts of the United States. For Florida, let's compare Florida to maybe um, Washington State. Seattle's a big place to move right now. It's a popular place. Uh, how do we compare to some of the other cities and states across the country? A family making the median household income for the area mm -hmm. can afford up to 125% of the median household price. So that really creates a lot of options for a family to buy a home compared to other areas you talked about Seattle, mm -hmm. but a lot of areas, particularly along the West Coast, that where people can't afford homes for, you know, for, for, for many, many years after they live there. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing some people buying homes that they simply can't afford? And in turn, what would that do to the housing market and if that trend continues, if it is a trend in, in the first place? Yeah, lending, has, lending is not the way it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. There have been a number of... Um, changes made to the process in terms of appraisal and qualification and I think there's there's very little of that. Are there still people who are stretching to make uh, home payments? Sure, but that's a personal choice and you gotta mm -hmm. remember that people are changing the way that they live now too. Historically most of us have had a car payment, for mm -hmm. example, that's factored into our debt to income ratio. Well, a lot of us now aren't buying maybe a second car or even a first car mm -hmm. and they're maybe living near where they work or Ubering, taking mm -hmm. Sunrail, using other ways where then all of a sudden you don't have another added burden to, to your annual debt. Is there any sort of advice you would give someone who maybe has a home, has a condo here in Central Florida and then gets a job elsewhere, maybe Atlanta, maybe elsewhere around the country and they don't want to sell the home, would you recommend selling it or is the option of renting it out to someone a good idea? That depends on your personal situation. Mm -hmm. If you're going to an area that you don't know and there's a chance that you might come back and you like where you live right now, mm -hmm. then maybe you keep it and you rent it for a while. The rental market, as we discussed mm -hmm. before, is, is pretty hot, um, but there are costs involved in doing that. But if you're thinking about moving to another area altogether and you don't see coming back to Orlando, then now's a great time to sell. And a big thank you to Lou for coming in and giving us that great insight on Central Florida's housing market. That'll do it for us on The Weekly. I'm Justin Mormoth. Have a great Sunday and a safe Labor Day weekend.